Well, great. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. We're really excited that you're here. Um, I think we're just going to jump right into the case. Okay, sounds good. All right. So our client today is a large retailer. And they're thinking about adding self-checkout stations to their stores. And they've asked us to figure out whether or not this is a good idea. Um, and if it is a good idea, they want to know about how much it's going to cost to convert and what the expected savings would be. Cost to convert savings, great. Um, no, this sounds really interesting. I know that a lot of uh, current retailers are making this move just from personal experiences. So uh, great to look into this. Uh, as you mentioned, this is a large retailer. Mm -hmm. um, in looking at the self-checkout, are we looking at just one store? Are we looking at the entire business of the retailer just to understand scope? It would be the entire business. Entire business? Yeah, it wouldn't okay. just be one store. Great. And you said that our primary objective here is to determine uh, yes or no if we would want to move ahead with uh, uh, potentially installing self-checkouts. Mm -hmm. And then um, if we were, what would be the cost and mm -hmm. what would be the savings? Correct. Are there any other objectives I should be aware of? Um, so... The client is also looking at a specific payback period, so they would want to make sure that there's a two, that they earn um, their money back in two years. Okay. And so you don't need to worry about discounting. Okay, great. All right, um, I think that's enough information for now. Do you mind if I take a moment to collect my thoughts? Of course. Thanks. Okay, so in looking at this, I would first hypothesize that, um, you know, based off of my recent experiences looking at retailers, that uh, this might be a good idea because I see a lot of retailers doing this, but I'd like to test out the hypothesis by running through a number of issues, uh, and we'll see where we stand after doing that. Great. So first, I'd like to understand a little bit about the retailer itself, just kind of understand, um, you know, how large this retailer is. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be helpful to understand, you know, how many stores that we're looking at, um, you know, how much revenue, so we could look at these potential cost savings and size it up proportionally to its revenue. Uh, also understand the uh, type of retailer that we're looking at, uh, you know, who are the customers, and looking at its space and its competitors. Um, I would imagine that, for example, a retailer that uh, deals with an older clientele, uh, these uh, customers might not be as 
um, adapt at using such technology. So that would be something to definitely keep into um, take into account, and also look at some of the uh, the capital uh, that this retailer has uh, for making such an investment. Okay. Uh, so that's information about the retailer, mm-hmm. uh, but I think what we're really going to want to focus on is the specifics, the specifically the financials of the actual self checkout idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to do this, I'd like to do a cost benefit analysis. Uh, I'm looking at the benefits. Um, look at the difference between the operating expenses, the OPEX. Uh, I would imagine that there's going to be a labor savings Mm -hmm. uh, by having uh, these different self-checkout counters. So I'm looking at uh, the effect on labor uh, and understanding labor will understand uh, what the different quantity change in labor that will be required uh, and then other factors such as according to the wages that are paid to their labor and we can kind of back that out and figure out what the different uh, operating expense savings would be. Uh, There also might be a change on the actual uh, throughput uh, mm-hmm. Maybe we could process more if the lines are long at the current store. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe we could process more customers. So then that might have an additional benefit uh, that could give us. Um, moving on to some costs, if we're going to install these machines, uh, self checkout lanes, if we don't have any currently, mm-hmm. uh, there's going to be some installation, uh, some initial uh, investment that we're going to have to make. Um, also, there might be maintenance costs associated with these self checkout lanes. Okay. Um, I, I imagine there's still a labor costs as well. Um, and then as I mentioned before, in different customer type, there could be a different customer reaction. Um, customers might see these self-checkout lanes and it could have a, uh, an impact on our image perhaps, mm-hmm. or um, it could actually worsen the throughput. Um, so I'd like to get information about that because that could potentially also be a cost. And then lastly, I think it might be helpful also uh, to look at the how that we would do this. Uh, if we were to do it ourselves, do we want to roll it out as a pilot? Do we want to do it all at once? Uh, or do we want to maybe license the idea or work with the third party uh, to roll this out? Okay, where would you like to start? Um, well, I think most of the meat is going to be around the actual self-check idea. I like to just get understand the landscape, what we're looking at, maybe understand the retail. Sure. Briefly. Okay. Okay, so... Um, do we know if they would, um, so do we know how many stores this retailer has? Yeah, there are 900 stores nationwide. Okay, 900 stores. And does it plan to roll out to all 900 stores? Um, yeah, let's think about it that way. Okay, all 900. And do we know what, um, that's great, um, so that's stores, uh, the estimated revenue of this retailer. Uh, on that? Annually, about twenty billion. Twenty billion. Okay. Great. Um, all right, that covers that. Uh, so, looking at just the type of retailer that, that this is, mm-hmm. um, do we know like what type of customers they typically attract? What uh, space this retailer plays in? Um, so, let's just think of them as any typical large retailer, like a grocery store or something like that. You can assume that people will be using the the checkout lanes, um, but the store itself has pretty much no experience with checkout stations. They've never used them before. No experience with, okay, great. It's good to know. Okay, and um, can we assume that the retailer would have the necessary capital to yes. make such an investment? Okay, yes. that's a good box to check for looking at this. Okay, so um, I think that's enough information to kind of jump into the actual looking at the self checkout lanes. So I think I'd like to go ahead and move there right now. Great. Okay. So I think one of the biggest potential for cost saving uh, would be through um, a change in the operating expenses Great. for these uh, self checkout counters. Okay, makes I would sense. imagine that the number of employees that'd be used and both the before the investment or hypothetically after the investment uh, would be different. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know how many um, employees we currently employ at the, the checkout station? Uh, uh, assuming that there's no self-checkout links? Yes. Um, so just a couple other assumptions that might simplify this a little bit. We'll assume okay. each of these 900 stores are the same size. Okay. Um, and the average store has 16 cashiers per shift okay. with two shifts per day. And two shifts per day. Yeah, there's an 8 to 4 shift and a 4 p.m. to midnight shift. Okay. Um, so uh, each employee would work an eight-hour shift. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Um, great. So I think in looking at this then, if we have 16 cashiers working uh, across two different shifts, that would say that there's a total of in a single day of um, two shifts times the 16 cashiers. That so means uh, 32 cashiers mm -hmm. per day. Okay, and then this is the, the before uh, scenario that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Great, and do we know, so while we're looking at the before, let's stay in this scenario for now, mm -hmm. um, the actual, um, how much they get paid per hour? Yeah, they make $10 an hour. $10 an hour? You can assume they all make the same. Okay, $10 an hour. And that's the same for both shifts. Yeah, you can assume there's no overtime or benefits or anything. We can just let's go with $10 an hour. $10 an hour, great. Uh, so that works. And you mentioned previously that we're looking at this uh, uh, potentially in, in an annual time frame. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I would multiply this $10 an hour by uh, 365 uh, once I look at the number of employees to figure out what the annual cost would, would be. Would it be just 365 uh, for going from an no, hour? No, so it would be, uh, there would be some additional steps to that as well. Um, but once I figure out the total cost of all employees mm -hmm. per day, uh, multiplying that by 365 would give me the annual cost. Yeah, great. Let's go with 350 just to make the math a little simpler. Okay, so I'll send 350 uh, days in here. Okay, great. Um, all right, so I think in trying to, um, before I jump into any of the math here, I think it'd be helpful to maybe understand uh, what the after situation would look like. Sure. Uh, so let me. This out. All right, so we currently know that the before we have any self checkout counters, we're mm -hmm. using 32 cashiers in a single day. Yes. Um, uh, I'd like to understand how this picture would change with the self checkout um, technology. Sure. Um, so, in terms of operating expenses, um, do we know how many employees would be required to run a single um, self checkout lane? Uh, so we have a couple of pieces of information. So we okay. know that the client would be looking at replacing about 75% of the aisles, let's say. There are currently 16 of them okay. with these self-checkouts. And one employee can oversee four of these checkout stations at once. Okay, one employee. For every four machines. For every four machines. Yes. Okay. Um, so based on the 16 cashiers we had previously, mm -hmm. uh, so 16 lanes, if we're replacing 75, um, that means that we're going to have 12 self-checkout mm -hmm. machines. Um, so if we're having 12 self-checkout machines, uh, and it's one employee per every four, mm -hmm. um, divide that um, by four employees mm -hmm. uh, that means we're going to have three employees will be needed to run self 12 self checkout machines yes okay that makes sense uh, but we also now have since only 75 percent are being replaced there's mm -hmm. the remaining 25 percent um so 25 percent of 16 lanes so we have also um so in addition to these three employees we have four lanes mm -hmm. um so these are non-self checkout um, and of course, these are one employee per lane, so we have uh, seven, or a total of seven employees, but there will be four employees for this. So I'm just adding these two up. Great. And is that for the day? Uh, that would be for one of the shifts. Okay. So for the entire day, we're looking at uh, just multiplying this by two. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'd have 14 uh, employees for the uh, entire day. Great. Um, so we can now look at this because we have, uh, looking at the before scenario, um, 32 cashiers mm -hmm. or employees needed for the entire day versus 14. Uh, so just looking at the difference between the two, uh, we could tell that that is a... Uh, we're looking at an 18 um, employee difference. 
Great. between the before and after. So I think before we're jumping into any of the other sections here, um, we could take this 18 employees that are paid per day. Okay. Um, and we can kind of understand um, I guess what the, the wage savings would be. Sounds great. Uh, with that. Yep, so let's do it. Let's do that. Okay, so we have 18 employees. that um, are making $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, and each employee is working eight hours in a day. And we know that they're, we're estimating at 350 days in a year. Okay, so if we're to multiply Great. this out, 18 employees by, so I'll just simplify this to $80 mm -hmm. uh, dollars per day per employee by 350 days per year, this will give us, uh, this multiplication will give us our cost savings for just labor in terms of wages. Great. Okay, so um, let me work that out now. I'm gonna use a separate piece of paper just to keep things in here. So multiplying 18 employees by $80 per day, uh, I initially get to $1,440 per day. Mm -hmm. uh, I can now multiply this by the 350 um, days in a year. Okay, uh, multiplying this out, I get a total now of uh, so I get five hundred and four thousand dollars per year in savings. And this is just for looking at one of the nine hundred stores. Great. Um, which you know, just looking at that, um, five hundred and four thousand dollars in a single year, you know, half a million dollars. Um, that looks like a sizable number. We're going to have to understand the rest of the costs involved in this, but right. uh, just on its head at the moment, uh, this looks like um, something that could have potentially a large impact. Great. Uh, so we understand now some of the cost savings. Uh, another one of the um, other going through our benefits. Are there any? Uh, do we expect any additional sales or throughput uh, benefits? Uh, it's good thought, but we can assume that that it's negligible. Okay. So. Great. All right, so now let's look at some of the uh, the costs okay. uh, that we could would have to cover here. Okay, so before jumping in to the actual installation costs, because we're actually looking at some of the um, uh, the actual annual savings, mm -hmm. I'd like to stay in the uh, looking at the annual um, different costs. Okay. So uh, one thing that came to mind is uh, maintenance, perhaps. Are there any maintenance costs that we have? To uh, we can assume it's negligible. I mean, there'll be some, but for the purpose of this analysis, we can assume zero. Uh, it also comes to mind, in addition to maintenance, there could be additional electricity costs or other um, utility costs. Uh, um, you know, with the current sort of conveyor belt type system they're using, I think there probably isn't a big difference there. That would make sense. Okay. Um, are there any other uh, operating costs associated with these self-checkout machines that I should be aware of? Um, are there any others that come to mind? So I'm trying to think of my experience in a supermarket, uh, walking through a self-checkout counter. Um, you know, we usually have the one employee manning the station over right. several, uh, if there's any issues. Um, yeah, they, I guess 
looking at the actual material they're made out of, it seems pretty similar to what an actual cashier line would be would use. Uh, maybe um, technical support, uh, a contract with the company should yeah, one break sense. down since there's more technology mm -hmm. there. Are there any costs related to that? Um, no, but good good thought. Something we can we can keep in mind to make sure we're telling our client. Okay. Okay, so it looks like um, there aren't any additional operating costs um, for the self checkout machine. Um, so I guess other areas I want to look at. Um, do we expect any difference in how our customers would? Um, oh, so we understand that we're going to need seventy five percent of our self checkout or of our lanes to be converted to self checkout lanes because mm -hmm. I guess a certain percentage of our customers. Um, would want to use the uh, normal ones, which makes sense when I think of like, my parents or <laughs> someone. Um, do we expect any impacts to the throughput? Uh, that would be a cost? We can assume that they're negligible. Okay. Okay, so I think that, that simplifies things here. Um, so maybe let's jump then to the actual um, initial investment okay. cost that we're looking at. Um, so this would be the variable and the word on here. So now, fixed upfront cost. Uh, do we know how much it would cost to install each machine? Yep, all in $50,000 per machine. $50,000 per machine? Mm -hmm. okay. And that includes the price of the machine as well as the installation. Okay. Plus the install. Great. Um, and we do know that we're going to be installing per store, uh, and this would be the same for all 900 stores, uh, 12 machines per store. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so if we were to just multiply the 12 times 50K, mm -hmm. uh, we'd then be able to arrive at how much the uh, initial investment per store would be. Okay, um, great. Okay. So I think this uh, work out to $600,000 per store. Um, would be the initial investment. And I know you mentioned earlier that we're looking at uh, two-year windows where we'd want this right. to be uh, um, um, a break even within the two-year. Yep. Uh, so just looking at per store, and since all stores are uh, homogenous here, uh, we're already looking at uh, a number that's, all, you know, one year savings is about half a million, so it looks like two year savings could be a million. Um, we're already well within that. So it looks like in a little over a year, we're gonna have, um, uh, this is something that is beneficial that the, the store should be um, uh, will definitely benefit from. We'll hit that break Great. even point. Great. Uh, so I think that answers our first question uh, that matches the initial hypothesis of yes, this would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. This makes sense of why these stores are doing this. I guess. <laughs> um, so uh, this is definitely something worthwhile to do. Okay. Um, and I think another one of the objectives that we're looking at is to understand um, what the total savings would be over um, over the two years. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so you know, in looking at that, um, should I include this initial investment or should I leave that out and just look at the savings over the two Let's years? Let's just look at the savings over the two years. Okay. Okay, so we know that in terms of savings, we have, this is our amount, uh, 504000 per year per store, and we know mm -hmm. there's 900 stores. So if we're to multiply this out, um, by 900, we'll know the annual savings uh, for all 900 stores Great. in the retailer. Okay, so let me uh, work that out on the scratch over here. Okay, so it looks like multiplying this out, we get a number of um, 453.6 million um, dollars per year. Great. So that would be the annual savings per year. Uh, if we were to multiply this out by two, uh, we'd get the annual savings over two years. Um, and you just 
looking at this number, uh, earlier we mentioned that the uh, total revenue was uh, 20 billion mm -hmm. uh, overall for the retailer, and I know that you know retail is a very competitive space. Um, and looking at uh, cases that we've done in business schools so far, looking at Walmart and Target, uh, mm -hmm. their margins were in the, the low single digit percentages. Um, this 453 million uh, as a percentage of uh, 20 billion is uh, would be a sizable chunk. I think this could be a, a significant savings for this retailer. Great, um, great. We're actually about to run to a meeting with okay. the CEO, so would you mind? giving us a quick summary of what we've done so far? Sure, might I take a second to collect my thoughts? Sure. Okay. Um, and based on the financial analysis, I would absolutely recommend that the store implement the self-checkout um, counters. Uh, this will give us an annualized savings of $453 million per year. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have a break even uh, within, well within the two-year um, restriction that the company that was looking for. Um, you know, however, I would want to, in looking at this, looks like we're doing a, a large reduction in labor uh, across the store. So I think it'd be important to um, look at issues that could surround that, uh, make mm -hmm. sure we're, that uh, any PR story that could be associated with this uh, and how to mitigate that you know, is something that we could effectively do as a company because this could be a lot of layoffs. Uh, we also mm -hmm. want to, this is a large technology investment that we'd be looking at. So um, making sure we're choosing the right technology and technology that's going to work for our store is going to mm -hmm. be really important. So we're going to want to analyze that thoroughly. Uh, so looking forward, I'd want to look at how we plan to roll this out. Maybe we want to do this at a store-by-store -store basis mm -hmm. um, to kind of mitigate risk on that end. Uh, also, we might want to uh, do sort of like a pilot program like this to kind of gauge the customer reaction to these different self-checkout counters. If there's any okay. new things that come up, um, then we could change before rolling out to all 900 stores because this will be a, a pretty large investment. Um, but yeah, absolutely, I think this is something that um, yeah, looks exciting. Sounds great. Thank you. Thanks.